do have another presentation, so I'm going to invite uh, Diana Wheeler, so a lady we all know and are familiar with, to come up, and she has some exciting news about some new things the city wants to do around Town Center. So we'll turn it over to her. There we go. Good. Thank you all for inviting me back this evening. I know that some of you may recall that I was here uh, a little over a year ago to talk about the town center plan and this evening I'm going to update you on where we've uh, been since that time, what we've been doing uh, and I'm very excited uh, to tell you what we have done. I think after you see the presentation you'll be excited as well. So let me tell you a little bit about what's been going on. When last we met it was October of 2014 and at that time, I shared with you the City Council's vision for the property across the street from the Forum. Their thought was that we would have a mixed-use development with retail shops and residential and offices that would serve as sort of like the town center for the community. Um, it would have a green space in the middle of it. There would be entertainment, especially evening entertainment, which we're kind of short on in our community. There would be plenty of parking for special events and other things like that. There would be a safe pedestrian connection between the town center and the forum. And then we would also have potentially opportunities for expansion in the future. At that time, back in October of 2014, I showed you this concept sketch that identified uh, what the vision was, and as you can see, this is Peachtree, Peachtree Parkway here, Medlock Bridge over here, of course we know Sprouts is over here, this is the main drive, this actually exists today. But there are going to be two restaurants along the front, retail at the street level, a restaurant here, the town green, residential development, a cine bistro, cinema, and behind all of this where it wouldn't be seen would be parking. So that was the concept that we were working on. And in order to identify how to bring that vision to reality, turn a plan into actual buildings, we started putting together a to-do list. Now back in October of 2014, all the things that you see up on the to-do list were already checked off. And that was great news for October 2014, but the the, the challenge was the fact that the to-do list was actually three pages long. This was just the first page. But we managed to accomplish that by then. However, since that time, we've done quite a few other things as well. Approved a master plan for the site. Contracts have been prepared for the sale of the property. We've gotten common area maintenance agreements. We've identified the financing. And we've also got a site development agreement in place. So that's a lot of work that's been done. I know it's just a few bullet points, but believe me that a lot of work has gone into those bullet points. But as you see, there's still a few important things yet to be done. The most important, of course, is that we have to close on the land. But we did secure a development partner. We've been working with that development partner. And as you can see, although I know it doesn't look like uh, there's much out there because not a lot has changed. Most of the work that goes into projects like this happen well before the first shovel goes into the ground. So you can see the construction is on, you know, when the project is about 70% of the way actually completed before we actually get the first shovel in the ground. So right now we are pretty much at the area of the land sale. We're almost at the land sale, which we're expecting will happen in spring, and construction starts in spring, scheduled to open mid-2017. Uh, this is um, an aerial view, if you were standing at Piedmont Bank, what the property would look like when it's developed. And then here's the ground level view. As you're going into the project, uh, looking towards the town green, you'd see the, the main focus of the, the central part of the property. Another view, a different perspective, uh, same sort of visual from the ground view. And then the Cine Bistro, which is by the town green. And what that would look like, the part here is where the parking garage would be. And over here, this little bit that you see is a restaurant that would be on the town green. 
So that kind of gives you an idea of, of what it would look like. And this is sort of an aerial perspective of the whole project in relation to what's around it. The forum is down here. And here's Chase Bank at Peachtree Corner Circle. And this is private development. And some of you will see some of that underway fairly soon, a restaurant site here that's already been permitted and will be developed soon. This is a creek which Mayor Mason likes to refer to as the Botanical Garden, and at some point in the future it will be developed that way. But it's the divider between this private property and the town center property. Of course, we know Piedmont Bank and Sprouts here and these retail shops, Zoe's Kitchen. But again, you see the town green, the Cinebistro, parking deck, the two restaurants out front, townhomes. It's really quite similar to the original concept We've tried to stay within that framework in order to make sure that we had the correct mix of uses um, and try to put that vision forward. Of course, some of you may have seen some of the uh, elevations the, that were proposed for the townhomes, the residential, again, keeping in character with the forum area. And we are also working on the town green plan, which are underway, and this is very exciting. The bulk of the town green is going to be this open lawn area here, but there are also going to be pavilions, statues, seating areas, a water feature, a stage, a TV screen on top so that people in the back can see the performance on the stage, um, a founder's monument, veteran's uh, monument right here. Uh, and some open area, some grass area. Um, over here, we hope to have a community garden uh, for maybe the restaurants to grow fresh herbs. Uh, maybe the folks who live in the townhomes would like to grow some vegetables or flowers. An opportunity to kind of incorporate nature into a large open area. And this is what it might look like in the future, as you can see, quite large. I promise you that the townhomes will not look like this. That's just what they put in there as a background, but um, it will certainly look better than that when they're done. Now, you saw this recently because Lee had the same map up. This is our multi-use trail plan. It's very important because everything we do is intended to connect to other things. We want to connect jobs to housing, and certainly within the central business district of the city, which is what we're looking at here, all of the uh, commercial areas around Peachtree Parkway, there's an opportunity for connectivity. And I'm not going to go into a lot of that because Lee did such an excellent job telling you about the trail system. But what's important about this trail system is right here for our purposes this evening. And that is the fact that in order to have a loop system throughout this area, you have to be able to cross Peachtree Parkway. And you can only do that in a couple of places. And on the north end, the one place that's been identified to do that is right at the town center project across from the forum. So we started thinking about a bridge, a bridge that would connect town center to the forum, but also to the botanical garden area, um, and to create a, a, an opportunity for people to get across safely. Now, if you look at the traffic volumes on Peachtree Parkway, they're really astounding. In the next 10 years, we're looking at nearly 50,000 vehicles per day on Peachtree Parkway. We can't build a town center and have something, a regional center like the Forum, and expect people to cross at surface level. It just wouldn't be safe and it'd be a concern. And it also wouldn't encourage people to go back and forth, which is what we're trying to do, because the Forum is really a premier shopping place. It's fabulous for retail. We're not trying to replicate that on the town center side. We're trying to complement it. So on the town center side, it's not primarily retail as the forum is. It's primarily restaurants and uh, entertainment, especially evening entertainment. So there's a lot of that kind of activity. The two together really create a unique whole project. So we have to be able to get people across from one side to the other in a safe way. So we started looking at what would be the goals for a bridge. Well, Obviously, it can be utilitarian, just a place to cross, but we saw an opportunity here, and the council certainly set the tone and said, here's a way to really create something that's unique and special in our community. Number one, we have to f remember that safety comes first, so that's very important. 
But number two, it doesn't need to be just a place to cross. It can be a place that's really a destination unto itself. It can also be a landmark because as a new community, we're trying to create an identity for Peachtree Corners. We're not part of Norcross. We're not part of Duluth. This isn't an extension of Dunwoody. This is a place unto itself, but it's very difficult for people to know exactly where Peachtree Corners is. So creating that landmark, a symbol of what this community is, would be a great opportunity with something like a bridge and it would create a source of pride for our community. Remember our tagline as a community, Peachtree Corners, is innovative and remarkable. So if you were to try to figure out what innovative and remarkable looks like in some kind of concrete form, what would that be? And so that was the challenge that we had. And to help us with that, we hired an expert bridge designer. By firm of uh, firm by the name of T. Y. Lin, and they are internationally recognized. These folks have done bridges all over the world. They know exactly what they're doing, and they do it very, very well. And they started with the process. They walked us through a process because we've never done a bridge, and so we rely on their expertise of identifying all the different variables and the different options, looking at the different types of structure. Uh, that could be incorporated different options for those things and we also because we uh, appreciate and value their expertise but we also want to have community input we had two subcommittees one was an internal subcommittee and another one was a uh, made up of community members our landmarks committee and we asked those folks what designs do you like? What do you think says innovative and remarkable? What would you like to see in this community? And ultimately, after looking at um, many, many different options, they narrowed it down to the one that they thought was the best. But remember, it's a bold statement. It's something that really has to stand out. And so we looked at other bold statements as a, a way of trying to figure out you know, how this could impact our community. And so I bring to your attention examples of other iconic landmarks. This is something we all know and treasure, something that we value highly, but it's a bold statement. And when it was first made, when the plans were first shown, wasn't completely well received. Now, of course, today, you know, we would fight to keep our, you know, national symbol. Well, it's not just true here. It's true in France. When they first came up with, Mr. Eiffel came up with his, what he thought was going to be a symbol for Paris, which has since become a symbol for all of France, it wasn't particularly well received. They even drew these really sarcastic, snarky little cartoons that showed Mr. Eiffel and had all sorts of nasty things to say about it, but the point is, it was a bold statement. And so it's important to remember that we have to take the long view we're not talking about something that we are going to have for 30, 40 years. Think about what will people say about Peachtree Corners 100 years from now when they see this. And so that is the symbol for Peachtree Corners, the one that our bridge designers have recommended that our committee has recommended and that we present to you this evening. And it can be quite dramatic at night because the cables can be lit. It can be red, white, and blue on the 4th of July, or it can be green, or it can be whatever is appropriate for the occasion. It could be all red at Christmas time. But obviously something that is quite unique and quite special and is like nothing else you will ever see anywhere.